Hi guys, in this video, you will learn what are the key steps to build a good machine learning model. Let's get to it. In part three, we're gonna start building models using the data that we prepare in the previous block. But what is a model? If you remember, we have a historical data of taxi rides. And for each date, in this case, the 13th of February, we want to predict for the next hour what's going to be the demand. For that, we have access to what we call features. There is data that we have available to input into our model. It's context we can use to derive our predictions. These are historical values of taxi rides for this example. And what we want to predict is the demand for the next hour. In this case, the red cross. And the model is just a function that takes in features and outputs a value. And we want the model to output values that are as close as possible to the target, to the real ones that we observe. But how do we build the model? In the previous block, we generated a tabular data set that contains n columns for the n features, which you can see here, plus one more column with the target, which is what we want to predict. How do we build a model using this data? The first step is to split the data into so-called two data sets, training data and test data. To split the data, most people talk about random splitting the data. That's in fact not the best idea, especially when you're using time series. So in this case, what we will do is we will take a cutoff date, for example, 1st of June 2022 at 12, and we're going to say training data is everything that happened before that day, and test data is all the data that we collected after that date. So our data set is going to be partitioned into two disjoint data sets, the training data in blue and the test data in green. Training data is what we use to build our model. So training data helps us build the model, the function that maps features to targets. The test data is something that we do not use at all when we create a model. We only use it at the very end to validate our model. So the test data is something that you separate at the beginning and you don't touch at all. Only at the very end, when you're done creating your model, you use it to evaluate, to assess how good your model is. But you don't use it to tune parameters of your model. And that's very important. But how do you build a model from training data? Initially, what you need to do in every problem is to create a baseline model. That is a simple rule that you can infer by looking at the data that uses no machine learning, that has no complexities, but that you can use to create what is called to obtain a baseline performance. For our problem, we're gonna use a metric error for regression problems, which is very common, which is a mean absolute error. So in this case, we're going to generate a baseline model using a simple rule, and we're gonna test it our, using our test data. And we're gonna get our baseline mean absolute error, our baseline performance. Once you have this value, you have a reference point against which you can compare successive iterations and can basically help you understand if your next model is actually better than the previous one. So once we're done creating a baseline model, we're gonna start using machine learning to build the model. And we're gonna build our first model. And again, once we are done building it or also called training it, we're going to evaluate it. And we're going to obtain another error metric. And hopefully the new one the new error that we got on the test data is going to be smaller. If that's the case, it means we've built a better model. And this process is something that you can keep iterating. So after this model, maybe we're, we're not happy with the results and we go and we build a second version of that model. And again, we do the same. When we're done creating it, training it, we evaluate it using the test data and we get, and we get a new metric error, right? And, well, it's not always uh, good news. Sometimes you create a more complex model, but you get actually 
worse results. So this is a very experimental process in which you are creating uh, better, potentially better versions of your model and again testing against the test data to see if that's actually working better for your data set. Now the question is, how do you build this, th this sequence of models, right? What are the strategies you can follow to find better models? And essentially, there are four of them. The first one is about increasing the training data, right? So if you start from a small training data set, one way, which almost always works, is to extend the data set. So for example, you use historical data from the last two months to train your first model. You can simply extend this window and use historical data going back to one year and then retrain the exact same model, but with a larger data set. This is something that almost always works. Another thing that almost always works is adding more features to the training data. In this case, this means adding more columns. So as features, we can use, for example, only pass values of writes, but also we can try to include external factors. For example, if you have access to a calendar of holidays in the US, that's something that you might need to use. Why? Because during holidays, the patterns in terms of taxi demand change a lot. There are probably spikes in taxi demand before Christmas. So adding this information to the model, it means adding more columns to this data set is for sure going to help your model get better results. The third thing you can do is to experiment and try to use a different algorithm to build your model, right? So there are lots of algorithms nowadays from very simple ones like logistic regressions to very complex ones like multi-layer perceptrons, which are essentially neural networks. Most courses tell you you need to try a lot of them and then see what works. In practice, let me tell you something. When you work with tabular data sets, almost always the best model is going to be a boosting algorithm, which means it's going to be either XGBoost, LightGBM, which is a variation of XGBoost, or CatBoost, which is a further improvement over these two. So you can experiment a lot if you want, but what I recommend is once you have built a good data set, a good training data set, try it, XGBoost, LightGBM, or CatBoost. If none of these three things works, it's very unlikely that any other algorithm will work. Now, finally, the fourth thing you can do to build a better model is to tune what is called the hyperparameters of your algorithm. For example, XGBoost, it's a boosting algorithm that works really well out of the box. But if you want to tune its performance, you can start playing with the hyperparameters. The hyperparameters are like external parameters to the model that you need to fix before training the model. So essentially tuning algorithm hyperparameters is a very complex high dimensional search problem. Fortunately, there are smart ways to find hyperparameters, and I'm going to show you how, using Python libraries that are open source. So tuning hyperparameters is something that almost always helps you improve results, but the improvement is normally much smaller than, for example, training data, increasing the training data set or adding more features, right? So I presented four ways to improve the model, one, two, three, four, and usually this is the order in which you should try them, right? Sometimes people spend too much time tuning model hyperparameters, and they forget that instead they could try to add more features to the model, either pulling in external data sources, as I said, calendar of holidays, or doing what is called feature engineering. That is, from the initial raw features that you got, you can engineer the right ones from them. For example, you could add a feature that computes the trends in average demand in the last two weeks, right? So instead of just giving hourly values of taxi demand for that area, you could also provide an idea of the trend. If it's if we have an upward trend, this may be a valuable signal for the model. So engineering features, it's always something that works better or has a larger impact than tuning model hyperparameters. But we're going to see how all these things work in the, pre in the next videos. So let's now move on to the coding part. And if you want to get more hands-on content about machine learning and machine learning operations for free, what do you need to do, Neil? You need to subscribe to Real World Machine Learning YouTube channel. Well said, son. See you guys.